Hey everybody, welcome back to Grey Malkin Lane, the podcast where queer friends review and discuss the original X-Men comics from the 1960s. Uh, last week we reviewed X-Men number 10, the coming of Kesar, where the X-Men journeyed to the savage land for the first time. Uh, the savage land is an Antarctic paradise full of dinosaurs. They got captured by a tribe of swamp men, cavemen guys, and then they met the sexy jungle lord Kesar and his companion Zabu the Sabertooth. Uh, Zabu's real name is Victor Creed and he fights Wolverine a lot. I'm just kidding. That's a different saber too. Uh, today we review X-Men number 11, which is titled The Triumph of Magneto, which is a little misleading as we'll see, uh, made in, uh, in early 1965. I'm your host, Chad Anderson, and I'm here with three of my friends and colleagues. Uh, I'll let each of you guys introduce yourselves. Uh, let us know what your pronouns are. Mine are he, him, his. And, uh, and if you'll answer this question today, which is relevant to our issue, uh, what books or shows or movies from your childhood do you recall fondly that have to do with aliens? Uh, Derek, do you want to start us off? Um, hi, I'm uh, Derek of 1407 Gray Malkin Lane. My pronouns are he, him, his. And oddly enough, I have to say X-Men because... Uh, when they did the uh, Phoenix Saga back in the 90s, it was my first foray into space in like, just didn't see anything like that. So, yeah. Uh, and then uh, do you want to tell everybody a little bit about your work at 1407? Oh, right. Um, yes. Um, we're over there. We're um, a YouTube channel. We review the latest books. We do uh, uh, slightly skewed commentary on various X-Men characters. Uh, and we do a we're do, right now I'm working on uh, two projects. One, how to uh, breaking down the entire X-Men timeline and like how long would it be in our time? And also why Chris Claremont is a hack. <laughs> That's a, <laughs> very controversial. So, he feels the way about Chris Claremont the way you do about Professor X. Oh, <laughs> Claremont writes like he solved racism. It's really kind of insulting. Yeah, like he had he had Kitty Pryde say the N word to a black dude. Like, wow, why? Wow, okay, you're you're doing this. We're doing this. Okay. <laughs> All right, Colby, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, I'm Colby. Uh, he, him, his, and. Um... So what was the question again about alien movie? Like the first yeah. alien movie we saw? Movies, books, cartoons, shows, uh, things that as a kid that you loved that involved aliens. Um, you know, this is gonna sound terrible, but uh, the actual movie Alien, like which is actually a horror film, right? But my parents let me watch stuff like that as a child. Uh, it, was, it was very scary, but at the same time, very fascinating, I thought. So I think that's the one I'm gonna go with. Did you say horror or horror? Horror film? <laughs> Yes, the horror film. If so you're those let you watch horror films, it tells me a lot about you now. <laughs> that hey, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Two of my best friends had their baby shower a few weeks ago, and part of their baby shower, they watched Alien. Ooh, there you go. I don't know if I would do that before having a baby, but... Um... Well, it was going to be either that or Rosemary's baby, so... Yeah, <laughs> choice. better choice, better choice. I've never seen either. I, I need to. I, I haven't to either, it. actually. We left before the movie started, but. <laughs> Heather, you go next. So, my name is Heather, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. And I've been trying to think if we really watched or had any alien shows. This is going to sound ridiculous, but like what came to mind very first one of the first DVDs we ever owned in my family was The Cat from Outer Space. Um, which is like a really, it's a ridiculous like Disney movie, like back when they were doing like live action movies, like Bed Knobs and Broomsticks and Darby O'Gill and the Little People and, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, one of the first DVDs we owned was The Cat from Outer Space. So that's what I actually thought of very first. Um, I mean, I guess technically like Jimmy Neutron had aliens in the movie, and we were big fans of Jimmy Neutron at my house. <laughs> uh, so my name is uh, Chad, like I said before, he and his. Uh, if I go back, this will date myself a little bit. Uh, back into the 80s, I remember watching ALF 
growing up. <laughs> uh, Alf is a, a, a like a puppet alien that was living with a suburban family, and it was a comedy, and it was very short on plot. Uh, I also very fondly remember a very old movie uh, that likely none of you have heard of called The Flight of the Navigator. Oh, I've yeah, seen that. Yeah, yeah. Like, old school. And I loved it as a kid. I probably watched it 10 times. Uh, uh, the X-Men have a lot to do. Last, last week, we talked about dinosaurs. Stanley's like, what should we have next? Aliens. And so we get a big alien in this issue, which is why. But uh, as, as Derek mentioned, the, the X-Men have a lot to do with a lot of aliens uh, in the future, most predominantly the Shi'ar. Uh, there's a lot of continuity uh, in direct relation. Uh, in fact, Professor X has like an alien girlfriend for decades. Uh, wife. So, that was his wife. It was baby, it was baby mama. And, and then well, his partner. I'm sorry. His partner, his child's mother. And Wait. And then they kind of had a baby, but morely it was like their genetic material <laughs> used to create a baby. Anyway, it's a win. Uh, it's a win. <laughs> good stories. Uh, so we're going to launch in today. Uh, as always, it's so much fun to go back and read these uh, comics. I haven't read the 60s comics in years. I'm assuming none of you had read X-Men 11 before today. Uh, it's nuts. <laughs> Let's begin with uh, with just the cover review. Uh, here's my old X-Men Epic collection. Uh, for everyone who wants to see, this is what the cover of X-Men 11 looks like. Oh, I'm making it worse. Uh, so we have a giant space old man attacking the X-Men. Uh, what are your thoughts on the cover as you guys uh, just take a look? What are your initial reactions? Um, Beast has some crazy eyes going on, for one. <laughs> just to point that out. It's like he's being blinded by the sun, maybe. Maybe. I have a theory that Beast is off his meds this entire issue, and the cover, <laughs> the cover begins that theory. So am I. <laughs> um, the stranger kind of looks like uh, Frankenstein. What do you imagine the Frankenstein monster? Because he's just huge, right? And he's like, he's kind of lumbering. Like, in, in his face, like, it, like uh, the way he... Uh, the way his face is set up, like, like he had like a bunch of hair and he shaved it, but he didn't know how to do it right. <laughs> it's like, what are these eyebrow eyebrows are supposed yeah. to be here, right? No, no. I like, brows. I feel like they wanted to save the big reveal for the stranger to the end of the issue, so I get it. But also, they're like, let's create an alien that looks like a really tall old man, like it's Orville Redenbacher like floating from the sky. I don't, it's a bizarre character design. Heather, what were your thoughts? Um, I mean, yeah, the stranger's eyebrows definitely throw me. <laughs> but he just looks so much bigger than everyone. And I know some of it is the perspective, but he just looks gigantic. He is gigantic. In future comics, he will sometimes uh -huh. appear at like 40 feet tall. Uh, he's, a, he's a strange character. Did you guys notice how, I don't know if it's just my copy, how like pale faced the background crowd is? Mm -hmm. They're all like super pale. It's uh, like zombie faces. It's very strange. They, they didn't want to paint true. those. That was extra money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's begin X Men Eleven. So this is called the uh, the Triumph of Magneto. Uh, we get uh, we get kind of a little trope at the bottom as they're introducing the creators. Uh, the letter X followed by a word. So extraordinary script, extravagant art, exceptional inking, and ex exemplary lettering, uh, which is just fun. That's a that's a long term trend in the X Men. They like to come up with all sorts of uh, punny X words. Uh, to there's there's a whole series called the X Dream X Men, uh, <laughs> and all their letter pages are named like exclamation points and you know things like that. Expressions. Uh, Claremont. It, it on. That's Claremont too. Just saying, it adds on to my point. <laughs> <laughs> So the issue opens with uh, Professor X trying out uh, some new machine that he has uh, called a radar image beam that can sense power and create distortion waves. Uh, uh, there's this image of some sort of crazy threat appearing rather like an x-ray and it explodes because the, the power of the person they're measuring is just too great. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on these initial pages, you guys? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Quiet, Angel. Hey, hey, we just got here. Shut up, Angel. Listen up. <laughs> Shut up, Scott. 
Beast is Beast is jumping in. Like he can't walk into the room. He's got to do like a half handstand as he flips around. He's flexing all the time. He's just like everything, verbally flexing, uh, athletically flexing. That's a, he, He's just a jerk. He's a 16-year-old he, jerk. He ran out of Ritalin, this whole issue. <laughs> uh, Heather, do you want your very own radar image beam? Oh, I think she froze. OK, <laughs> we will edit in post. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I think we are having technical issues. Okay, well, we'll continue. I hope she's able to rejoin shortly. Um, I will make a comment about this gigantic projector. I mean, I know that we are in the 60s, but like this thing is enormous. I mean, where would you put that in your living room? I. <laughs> Rich man Xavier, Xavier has like rooms in his house like the size of high school gymnasiums. Like everything is enormous. Okay, so can I just then ask another question? Where did he get all of his money from? You know, the next issue we review actually, X-Men 12, is called The Origin of Professor X. So we get to oh. learn more about him. But he has a very, very wealthy family uh, and lots of investments. Also, he's telepathic. So I think he can just, you know. Played the like, stock market well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we later know he we later learn he knows a lot about the future as well so i think he can just mm -hmm. uh he can invest where he likes heather you're back hooray yes the gene uh, is back <laughs> so are you back you okay yeah i'm really sorry my computer wi-fi decided to crap out so i switched over to my phone you're okay i <laughs> asked you if you if you perhaps would like your very own radar image beam in your own house um, if it's going to explode, I'm going to say no. Because <laughs> I don't want to have to clean that up. So uh, this is the first time in a few issues where they have detected some sort of mutant. Uh, they have the goal of recruiting him ever since, or, or before Magneto possibly can, uh, which is, you know, we've seen this plot line a few times now with the Blob and Eunice. And uh, it's just too powerful. They don't know where he is, even though I'm a telepath and it's not actually a mutant. Go out and find him quick, my X-Men. Uh, Beast is being very, very extra as he does little handstands on, on one finger, finger stands. Uh, and Iceman decides to get him back by creating a wall of ice, which Beast then uh, slides off of with the sound effect slurp. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts about the, the hijinks between the X-Men here? Well, I think it's interesting that they're relying so much on the radar image beam because every other time Professor X has done his little creepy eyeballs in the middle of nowhere really? to find a mutant. And so the fact that they're like, okay, well, since the radar image beam isn't working, there's no way we can find him, even though that's never what they've used before. And so if Professor X can't find him if he's that powerful professor X should be able to find him really easily you would and yeah and so the fact that like he can't maybe should send a message that maybe it's not a mutant <laughs> it's possible that the stranger who's quite powerful we will learn oh, has some yes. sort of blocking like he he may possibly his nature may block his ability to be tracked sure perhaps Derek what were you gonna say I, I was going to say, um, also, you got to remember, this is Professor X before Cerebro, really. So he's, like, he's just going off of like, he, he's powerful, yes, but not, he doesn't have, I'm pretty, he doesn't have like a, a rate, like that far of a radiance. We actually, we actually do have Cerebro in these early issues, but it's oh. like a little tiny computer with a bunch of wires. Yeah. It's not, it's not the same Cerebro we know in the future. Beta, beta testing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we flip the page, and Professor X is pissed that the uh, the Iceman has been joking around. Oh, by the way, uh, we get Beast saying "Gadzooks" and Iceman calling himself a little old frost pot, which is adorable. <laughs> That's what I call myself. <laughs> Isn't that your grinder tagline, Colby? The <laughs> yes. <old frost> <laughs> Uh, Professor X is pissed. Uh, so we get a scene change over to a hotel. So let's pause for a continuity deep dive for a moment. The stranger, I will go ahead and introduce uh, quickly here. He is not a common character in the comics. 
but he has been showing up sporadically throughout the years. He's fought the Avengers, he's fought Thor, he's fought uh, Quasar, and he has come back to fight the X-Men a couple of times, most prominently in a miniseries uh, called X-Men Forever. So after the X-Men movies came out, you guys remember how like Mystique was all uh, jeweled and blue and uh, Toad is like a tall like karate master guy. Uh, they suddenly started appearing in the comic books that way. And so uh, Fabian Nicieza wrote this series called X-Men Forever in which he used the stranger experimenting on mutants to explain why Mystique and Toad suddenly started looking different, even though they just went back to looking the same in the comics in the near future. Uh, but the stranger is a, a member of a very powerful alien race called the Gigantons, which has some ties to some other bizarre Fantastic Four characters. Uh, he is basically an experimenter. He likes to come and collect people. Uh, there's another character called the Collector, not the same. Uh, he likes to come and collect people uh, who have genetic potential or mutation. And uh, he's coming to Earth to find people who are interesting. Uh, uh, to, to take back into space and look at. Now, nobody knows this at the time. Uh, his powers as they appear in this issue, I've made a list really quickly. He can conjure fistfuls of money, which we'll talk about in <laughs> just a second, uh, which makes ladies faint sometimes. Uh, or his, I'm sorry, he can levitate, which la makes ladies faint sometimes. <laughs> he can detect power sources, uh, phase through walls, fire energy blasts, turn men into stone at a molecular level, uh, generate a cone of energy, uh, dissolve people into space, enhance his own size, and wrap people in anti-magnetic membranes. So he's quite powerful, and we'll talk about each of those as we go. Uh, but what are your thoughts about uh, about the stranger as a villain in this issue? First of all, what is going on with his facial hair? That is a weird beard. It's like a mustache, but on his chin. Mustache that starts here, and like the just the whiskers right here. <laughs> his original Stanley was originally going to call him Weird Beard, but they uh, they they took it. <laughs> I mean, either one is very apt. And his hair is something. It's a perm, right? It's an all-around perm, right? Like I don't, I don't. It's it's puffy, but it's big. Or he has a huge <laughs> head. It's yeah, like, I can't tell. It's like a white chia pet. I don't know <laughs> what's going on there. Who does he remind you of? Just visually, if you look at this guy, who does he remind you of? Colonel Sanders. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Sanders was a uh, he's a omni he, he's a he's an all powerful being like TFC things is something he does for a job he needs the money I feel that, like that's where he got the money it, yeah <laughs> I feel like he's a Confederate war general of some yeah sort. Mm, okay yeah how it feels uh, or or perhaps Walter Matthau from Grumpy Old Men I don't know. <laughs> And it still cracks me up that his eyebrows are like wider than his actual eyes. Oh, he's got old man brows. Oh, also, yeah. what's with, what's with the little thing on the side of his mouth? Like he has like a um, he has the he has the uh, Fu Manchu, but then he has like a little bit of hair. Yeah, right? That's what I was talking about. The little whiskers just Fluffy. like here in his ear. Like, like... <laughs> he's definitely um, an alien. He was watching, t he saw some uh, TV shows and like, oh, that's what they wear. He saw the villain yeah. like, that's what they, yeah, I like I that. I think one of us should volunteer to be him for Halloween. I'm gonna be the vanisher who wants to be the stranger. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I can imagine like, he looks so, like Supertube as an old man. So your thoughts of him as a villain, is he an effective villain? Did he intrigue you? He's kind of mysterious through the whole issue. He is mysterious. I always have a little bit of a problem with the villains that seem invulnerable and that are not able to be defeated because yes, they, that makes them a very effective villain because they're going to win, but I don't feel like it makes for very good storytelling for me personally. If the hero has no chance, then why are you telling the story type of thing and so in that aspect he is he is an extremely effective villain because no matter what they do it seems like he's going to win mm -hmm. but 
from a storytelling perspective, I'm not sure that he is an extremely effective villain, but that's just from my personal view. I like the mystery of him. I like that you don't yes. really know what's going on with him until the end. And clearly Magneto ends up over his head, which we'll talk about. Yes. But <laughs> they, don't, they don't know what they're getting into here. Uh, uh, Colby and Derek, any thoughts on the stranger as a villain? You know, I don't really think of him as a villain. I think of him just like, he's an alien, he's an alien who's just doing experiments. Like he, there's no, uh, there's no malice. It's not, he's not doing it to, because he's evil. He's not doing any, but he's not a good guy either. He's just yeah. trying to figure it out. It, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't really see, he looks at humanity the way we do those old, uh, dissect the, uh, those old frogs we used to dissect in uh, chemistry class mm -hmm. it's the same concept for him so he's just trying to figure he's just working it out i don't think he, i don't think him as a villain i just um uh, keep him just keep him away from people because he's gonna he's gonna mess with them <laughs> so in the beginning here he reminds me of like somebody's grandpa basically <laughs> like he looked like a grandpa. He like obviously he doesn't, doesn't like, know like what he's doing and just apparently has loads of cash to give out. So you know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> my favorite stranger story. Uh, so I, I used to work on the Marvel Handbooks line, which I mentioned a few times, which is super nerdy, super fun. But the guy who started the Marvel Handbooks in the eighties is a guy named Mark Granwald who uh, passed away a long time ago. Stanley and Jack Kirby introduced all these like one-off characters, including the stranger who would like show up in an issue of the Fantastic Four, or the Avengers or Thor, and then they were never seen again. And in the early nineties, Mark Grenwald was writing a series called Quasar, which is not well known. And he had Quasar find the stranger in space with a ship full of all of these characters that had never been shown again. So, so all these characters that sh showed up in the 60s, 70s, 80s that were never seen again, Quasar went into space and discovered that the stranger had captured all of them and kept them on his ship. So it was like this really fun continuity deep dive. You're like, oh, who are these characters? Uh, so there's there's a really couple, uh, a fun couple of uh, Quasar issues that feature the stranger uh, with just tons of deep continuity nerd dive stuff in them. Uh, so super, su super worth checking out. Uh, so the stranger lands on Earth. He's looking for powerful creatures, but first he needs to rent a room from a sassy old lady who, uh, who thinks he's just a weirdo and she demands payment up front. Quote, uh, look Curly, I'm glad you're satisfied, but I'll expect a full week's scratch in advance. Uh, you know, Cabbage, Jack, Moolah, Doe, The Rent. Uh, spoilers, this is my favorite character in the whole issue. This <laughs> sassy that one. is more than valid. I really love her. Okay, first of all, that is not a lady. I feel like that's a man in a way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that, wow, that, that hot take, hot take. I mean, it kind of looks like Mrs. Doubtfire. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> she kind of looks like Granny Goodness from a uh, Dark Side's um, uh, from Superman, like the, the the lady who just goes around like stealing children. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I, I I adore her. We only get her for four panels, but she's she's my favorite thing in this whole issue. <laughs> her window, though, like she's stand a woman who can stand up for herself. <laughs> But like all that, like I, I want that scratch, I want that moolah, I want that cheese, I want the bread, I want every, I want that money. Like, oh, okay, all right, this is 1965. Why are you bringing up old, like 2021 rap terms? <laughs> <laughs> and then we get creepy stranger like reaching his hand in his pocket. What's he gonna pull out? It's a fistful of cash. Here you go. <laughs> uh, oh, so it's for money. They're ones. The, uh, the stranger goes out, uh, starts phasing through walls, levitating through the air, looking for powerful people. The public is freaking out and he immediately is drawn to Magneto and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Now we saw them every issue for a while. They have not been around for a couple of issues. And Magneto is in a full on angry manic episode in this issue. He is pissed and like he is like the worst we've seen him. I don't know. Well, uh, tell me your thoughts about Magneto here. Well, first, can I say when he's like levitating and people are like, what's happening? What the fuck? And one of my favorite theories that someone comes up with is he's probably wearing some new kind of helium belt or something. <laughs> like, why is that your first thought? Like, <laughs> is this what people think this is going to be? <laughs> Oh, there's a man flying. He must have a helium belt on. 
let, let's actually pause on Magneto for just a second. We'll come back in just a second. The, the X-Men go out looking for the stranger. Uh, we see an image of Cyclops basically being accosted by police officers. They walk over, they think he looks suspicious, they rip his sunglasses off despite his warnings, and boy do they regret that. Uh, we're having lots of conversations in 2021 about inappropriate police behavior, uh, but these are guys just like grabbing some guy off the street without cause. Tell me some of your thoughts on the cops here. I can't see. Should be a me. Should will be if that would happen today. I can't see. That that would have been his whole thing. Uh, yeah, he. How are you gonna get harassed for having sunglasses? Don't I don't get that. Like, like that's illegal. That's totally illegal. Not, not but, to mention, how did they know that he wasn't blind or something? Like maybe he was wearing right? glasses. But he's blind. <laughs> it's like. We've never seen you around this beat before, so obviously you're highly suspicious, you know, not that people can go anywhere they want to. And like, maybe he just moved there. Maybe he's been there, but he's like, they haven't noticed him before. Like, what? <laughs> Jean Grey's mom a few issues ago tried to rip his sunglasses off too. Like, do you guys ever- Why do people think that's okay? Maybe they think he has beautiful eyes under there. He does have beautiful eyes, but he doesn't need to show that. It's his choice. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe he's a little cracked out and his, he's hungover and he needs sunglasses to cover and it's not their business. Why he has to be cracked out though? Maybe he just doesn't want to be out going outside. Like, yeah, I'm like, or if he allergies. really just is like, hey, I am more comfortable being out in the world with sunglasses on. Thank that you, is man. nobody's business but his own. He's preventing wrinkles. <laughs> Uh, so this is a good moment if you guys choose to share a personal story. Uh, I, I overwhelmingly like to believe that cops are good people, but I've certainly seen my share of cops over the years who have power trips. I got pulled over one time for driving 32 and a 25. And the cop that came up, his name was Officer Lawless, no joke, like had his hand on his gun and was like, positioned at my window, like, roll it down, you were speeding through my town, like, so mad. <laughs> I was like, whoa, man. Uh, do you guys have any uh, uh, power tripping cop stories? I have actually, knock on wood, never been pulled over. Um, but even, like, my brother has been pulled over a couple times and has never really had a bad experience but I mean he's also a cis white man but <laughs> um I know there was one time he used to drive deliveries for a, a food place and he was leaving a house and it was like a Sunday afternoon and so there's nobody else on the road and he just really was not paying any sort of attention and was driving on the wrong side of the road and the cop pulled him over because he thought he was like high or something because he's driving on the wrong side of the road and pulled him wow. over and was talking to him and my brother's chatting with him and he was like you know I pulled you over and I thought that you were like drunk or high or something he goes you're very clearly not but you were still driving on the wrong side of the road so I'm still gonna have to give you a ticket and my brother was like yeah that's valid <laughs> like don't can't even fault you for that I I messed up and so I but like I said he's also a cis white man but I have never actually been pulled over so I don't really have any personal stories uh I kind of do I I grew up from um Oakland California and I was so I was I was told by my family or early on how to deal with the police so um as I grew up as I got older I always thought if I'm ever uh in a situation it's best to have a couple white people around with me because just to get me out of the like you know for just for protection but uh one night we were heading uh we were heading uh to my friend's house and we got pulled over and the cop just like you know blurt and he t they told us to get out of the car and i you know i, I was gonna open the door like have my hands out and all of a sudden i hear put get your hands back in there we're about to shoot you we're like okay all right all right we're i just kind of with me with the police it's you gotta, you gotta kind of like go with it. Just it, 
they're on the power trip. All they want to do, all they want to do is just, uh, they want to know that you're paying attention to them. So just do what you do what they say. Know that you're not doing anything and just keep it, keep it moving. But also know where you're, know what you are. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I, uh, I apologize if that question was insensitive as a person of color dealing with that question. That's a totally different thing. My goodness. No, we're, you, no, we're used to it. It's just like, like, you know, I don't, it's, it reminds me of this, um, old episode of Will and Grace I saw where, uh, they, they um, somebody threw a, like a bottle at, at, uh, Will's head and he's just like, all in a day. It, that's all it is. Like, all in a day. Like, you know, it's fine though. It's not, it's, uh, it, I'm not gonna, it doesn't define me. It's just like, it's just like one of those really annoying things, like going, like waiting in line and just like, he's like oh i had to deal with this bullshit <laughs> and it's been a rough year with a lot of hard conversations so thank you for uh, for answering that question no problem uh, Cole, did you want to tell a story you know i haven't had any like serious run-ins with the like any officer i mean every time i've been pulled over it's for doing five miles an hour over so yeah, I can be doing like 20 miles an hour over past the cop and they don't even blink an eye, but if it's five over, then I get pulled over. So, but I can't say that anybody's ever really been a complete jerk. So I haven't really had a bad experience. I mean, except for getting a ticket like twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, moving forward, the X-Men help save Cyclops from the cops because if you have superpowers, you can do that. And uh, they get him up to safety using a an acrobatic beast and uh, a, a, a and generated ice tunnel. <laughs> what was that, Heather? He grabs Cyclops with his feet. <laughs> his, hand, his feet. He can, gra he can grab you with just like with your hands. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he loves his feet. I kind of love his feet. I don't know. I'm not into feet, but I, I love Beast's feet. Really is that the beginning of your foot fetish, Chad? I think it is. <laughs> you know, and also think about it. What if you're in bed and the remote's right by your foot? Instead of having to go reach out, you could just like, oh, get my foot. Oh, thank you, foot. Thank you. Or you, you can just have right? oh, I feel like I feel like Beast would do a handstand on one finger and then reach across the bed to get the remote with his foot because he's right. extra all the time. <laughs> uh, okay so magneto is trying to impress the stranger uh, or dominate him i don't know he tries to wrap him up in a bunch of metal the stranger isn't having it uh, but we see a very divisive magneto here we've had a lot of commentary in past episodes about his motivations uh, let me read his little speech to the stranger here he says uh this is why you must join us because i am power i shall one day reduce the human race to slavery so that homo superior can take over and those who serve me shall reap the rewards. Now in the current comics, the X-Men have formed their own nation of Krakoa. Uh, we see Magneto, uh, not, not like this, not calling people slaves, but they are certainly, there's a lot of like mutant pride and we are better than kind of commentary, kind of threading through. What are your thoughts on, uh, on very angry Magneto here? Like, who put a bee in his bonnet? He needs to chill. <laughs> is, that a, is that a bonnet? Oh, I'd love it if that was a bonnet. His helmet's actually a bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. He can't get it off. That's why he's so mad. <laughs> <laughs> he's hiding his acne underneath. Oh. Uh, uh, hey. um, as far as with Magneto, I think that, I think he was just mad that day. Because you know how you just go extra when you're already kind of pissed off. So in this, yeah, he's just doing too much. All this could have been a conversation. The Magneto I know now would have just had us, like would have sat down, had tea and say, let's talk about this. This is why you should be with me. There are times I love Magneto. In this issue, I definitely want him to be like just humiliated and defeated so badly he's awful <laughs> so uh, toad is leaping for joy behind him good master good and then we see mastermind using his powers in some kind of new ways here he's creating full environments he makes the stranger believe he's at the bottom of the ocean uh in a in a 
uh, Volcano. Uh, this is the mastermind we see later who like really screws with the Dark Phoenix. Uh, he's, he's, he's coming into his own power wise. Uh, and how does the stranger handle it? He he's says, well, now it's time for me to give an example of my power. Red. <laughs> he turns him to stone. He just molecularly turns him into stone. It's amazing. Is it stone? Yeah, yeah. It's a so solid like a block of matter. Oh, solid yeah. block of matter. That's so heavy. But also, it seems like the stranger it was like a little star. He's like, oh, whoa, this is, whoa, I didn't see this before. Oh, this is crazy. And like, it's <laughs> like he was startled. Like, oh, whoa, this is, I've never seen this before. I want to I see where this goes. Like, <laughs> not to show the time, of, time for them to put respect on my name. I am the stranger. Uh, Magneto, or, I'm sorry, Mastermind's so heavy he like propels through the floor, <laughs> like into the into the uh, into the, the main thing. Yeah, and then <laughs> help, police! <laughs> uh, so the X Men are now hearing these cries and they rush to confront the Stranger, but also find the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants there. And as always, uh, crazy hijinks ensue. Uh, tell me some of your thoughts and reactions, or your favorite parts of the battle that follows. I. Quicksilver and Angel doing their little dance is a little bit ridiculous. I mean, it's all a little bit ridiculous, but, and I always love how many times have the X-Men fought the evil brotherhood and they are always so like confused and startled when Quicksilver, when they can't catch him, like when Angel's like, no matter how fast he is, one punch is, a, is all it'll take to what? Where did he go? Like, bruh, you know what he does. You know that he is Quicksilver. Like, he's real fast. <laughs> this should not be a surprise every single time y'all come face to face. Although you have to consider, I think they've been training because Iceman's method against Quicksilver here is pretty impressive. Yes. He like encases him in ice, which is certainly going to stop him. He's in a long old snowman. <laughs> no, I think Xavier encourages uh, that kind of mindset. Like, he, he wants Angel to be confident going against Quicksilver, knowing there's no way they can really <clears throat> really touch him. But with Iceman, I think he told him, like, hey, why don't you try using your powers a little bit like this? Like, he encourages, he gives false courage to some, he gives uh, knowledge to others. Mm -hmm. Not a dick. <laughs> Charles is a dick. <laughs> dick is <laughs> He's a, he's a cis white man in the 60s. Of course he's a dick, but like there's Charles levels to it. a dick. <laughs> levels to it. <laughs> no, I, I do agree I, on this issue. Charles is not as dickish as normal. He's, he's But in general, Charles is a dick. Those so Magneto. Mystique is a dick. Mm -hmm. well, Which is I ironic. say Magneto's not a dick. Oh, no, 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 no. Mag no I, all right, all right. I will say Magneto you understand where he's coming from. He's just angry and you just don't know where it's coming from. Uh, Charles, he, he, he's a dick, but like, imagine how the world would be without him. And we've seen that before. Hey, Charles, Charles is the, using the police officer analogy, he's the cop that figures justice is the greater good. So it's okay for me to like plant evidence or like fake things in order to like get my needs met or like reach, he, he, he assumes that the ends justify the means a lot in these early issues. I think we see a lot of that with, it, with Professor X over time. No, I like, to, I like to try to see him as like the noble guy. I really do, but he's awful in some of these early issues. He really is. In this issue, he's fine. Yeah, yeah with the whole Jean Grey thing, like you're the only one I ever loved. Like mm -hmm. he had one, Inappropriate thought. <laughs> it was just what? <laughs> Isn't that what it is? With it? It's not but nowhere you report. Well, but in X Men two and three issues two and three, he mind wipes people. He like takes people's memories and and like their identities away. I mean, there's some ethical He's concerns. Identity theft. Master manipulator. Mm. But also, he he developed a telepathic ethics. Like most telepathic most telepaths in the Marvel universe follow his lead because he's the one who said we don't uh we don't leave people's minds without their permission we don't invade people's minds without their permission uh, unless under um 
under a certain circumstance. It, it could be worse, but like, so Derek, this is me officially extending an invitation. You're inspiring me. I wanna have a panel of people on and we're gonna have a special episode where we talk about Charles Xavier's history and whether he's a hero or a villain. And I think we like do our research and we come in prepared. Will you join me for that sometime in the near future? Absolutely, I, you, you know how to get a hold of me. I'm right here. Let's, let's <laughs> do it. I think, I think that would be actually really fascinating. We'll just talk about Professor X and, uh, and whether he is good or evil or where he falls in that spectrum. And don't get me started on his children because that wasn't his fault. <laughs> they ran away, the women ran away without telling him. That's not his fault. I am going to reserve why my did they? But what made them run away without telling him? What did he do to them? So okay. I'm, right. I'm going to reorient us back to X number 11. <laughs> but I really do want to have this discussion. We're going to have a whole Professor X episode. Oh, we're cool. We're good. <laughs> so back to the battle. Uh, uh, Quicksilver is encased in ice. Scarlet Witch is not OK. They Again, they are always going to stand up for each other. Uh, and uh, oh, go ahead, Heather. Oh, no. Oh, I, I actually have a comment about Scarlet Witch. Can I ask, why does she have a toilet seat cover around her face? That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, right? Maybe she has acne on her on the sides of her face. That's Maybe she has a beard, yeah. like a, like a full on beard. <laughs> <laughs> she could hide her beard. <laughs> like she has her father's bus, uh, mutton chops. <laughs> She's got some chops under there. That makes sense. Okay. Maybe she's recovering from plastic surgery. <laughs> we called it a couple of times and she's just trying to hide it. I don't know. We don't know. We don't we've know. Called it a, we've called it a head sock in previous issues. And I still stand by that. <laughs> but shortly she gets her iconic kind of like M headband. Like the head sock gets replaced with just her little red tiara that's like mm -hmm. a little G ear thing. Uh, okay. So the stranger forms a cone of energy. Uh, and Magneto and Toad rush into it. Uh, Colby, when's the last time you stepped into someone else's cone of energy? <laughs> Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> uh, what will your boyfriend say about this? I'm going to ask him later. <laughs> okay, you can ask him later. He'll be here. That's their business. We don't know. We don't need to know about their business. That's, how, that's their business. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the stranger, Magneto, and Toad all disappear, and uh, the X-Men are left to kind of clean up the mess. Uh, Scarlet Witch hexes the whole ceiling down onto Beast, which is, frankly, kind of the most impressive thing we've seen her do with her powers so far. She gets much more powerful in the future, obviously, but this is probably the most impressive it's been. Uh, Cyclops has to blast the ceiling apart after Beast spins it around with his feet in the air for a while, and, uh, and then Marvel Girl lashes out. Uh, tell me some of your thoughts on uh, on this battle that ensues here. Um, Beast is verbally assaulting everybody. My comment <laughs> is like, how does it feel to be a human garbage disposal unit? Uh, <laughs> that hits me right here. I've been called that so many times in my life. <laughs> I'm like, like it's like he helped you and you're insulting him. <laughs> It's funny. It's great. It's great. Uh, <laughs> um, also, I, I really like how Wanda, like, how long does it take Wanda to get ready? Because that's very <laughs> interesting. Because she has the leggings, the, the, um, the little, I don't, are those pogo stick shoes? Like, like, I don't, I don't know what. Leg I warmers. Know. Leg warm. Yeah, I got the leg warmers. Like, that, like she has to put her hair up in curls and then put it in the toilet seat bowl. I mean, that's, a, that's a lot to get together. And it's like gloves up to here and like- She has the shirt under yeah. the leotard. Like every inch of skin is covered except for her face. Yeah, she wants to be, she's like, nobody's objectifying me today. Covering up the moles. But everyone objectifies her and it's the worst. It's yeah, a it's terrible right. costume. It really is. The Scarlet Witch's first costume is awful. Maybe Toad's is also equally bad. <laughs> um, so they save Quicksilver from his little, excuse me, icy sheath. And uh, Quicksilver and Magneto, I'm sorry, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are done. They're like, we quit. 
we're done with Magneto forever. Like we're leaving the Brotherhood and the Brotherhood does dissolve in this issue. It's, it's finished now. Take back your power. <laughs> well, I, 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 it doesn't seem like she was taking back her power. It looks like she was like, Scott Summers, it looks good right now. I want me a piece of that snack cake. <laughs> mm. Amen. A right? Star- <laughs> right? Hey. A, a Scarlet Witch Cyclops love story would be very strange. It's happened. Scarlet Witch and Cyclops? Oh, yeah. It happened in... I don't like it. It happened... No, it, actually, it's really funny because um, it was established that uh, Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch were Magneto's kids. And um, when Cyclops went over with Magneto, he and, he and the Scarlet Witch got together and Magneto was super into it. He's like, yes, I love it. And uh, hey, it's like, hey, I know you don't, you don't need to, but in front of Quicksilver, can you call me father? Mm. It is some of the, the, some of the shadiest but most hilariously burned. So, oh, Magneto was, he was such a dick. That's a dick. That's a big old <laughs> lot of dick. Just yeah. all, all just slap you in the face. Bizarrely, I don't think I've read Ultimate X-Men. Strange oh, it's but, good. But I'm also remembering there's an alternate universe somewhere where Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch were hooking up too. That was the same one. Was it, that's, mm, okay. But, oh, but they weren't really brother and sister. Yeah. <laughs> Game of Thrones called and they want their plot line back. Twin <laughs> cest. Uh, this is like look at twins so weirdly. Like, so the Quick, Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch are leaving for Europe. They're done, and in in the near future, they will be recruited by the Avengers for for Captain America's Kooky Quartet, which is a a, a total different storyline. Uh, but they propel into kind of superstardom after this. They they have a long history. We won't see the Scarlet Witch with the X-Men for a long time, but we've referenced in this podcast before, in the future, she kind of goes mad. She casts this crazy spell that like results in the deaths of millions of mutants and millions of others losing their powers. Uh, in the recent comics, which would be a spoiler, except this episode won't come out for a month uh, on Grey Malkin here, but she appears to have been murdered on Krakoa in a comic book that just dropped last week. Uh, so there's a big uh, there's a big storyline unfolding uh, around the Scarlet Witch and the X Men right now, which is going to be fun to see how it plays out. Magneto innocent hashtag Magneto innocent. He didn't do anything. He didn't do nothing. <laughs> I think Mystique's behind it. But I don't know. We got some crazy stuff happening. It's going to be interesting. Uh, so a very angry uh, stranger is pulling Magneto and Toad aside, and he grows himself to giant size to demonstrate his power and then wraps Magneto and Toad in some magnetic or anti-magnetic membranes. Uh, um, <laughs> that's how science works. It looks like he just jizzed all over them, but I'm just Aww. gonna... <laughs> it does. Blanket. Derek, Derek, we get a little bit saucy on this once in a while. But... No, no, it's fine, it's fine, I love, I love it. It's, it's fine. Especially me. Honestly, of course I had that initial thought, but it looks to me more like in cartoons when people would get like be th- trying to throw the pizza dough and then <laughs> miss and it would like land on them. That's what it reminds me more of. But on Grey Milk and Lane, we have to, of course, go straight for the obvious sexual jokes because that's what we do. <laughs> it's like it's like Alien Silly Putty. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, okay, that's fine. I got it. Uh, but, oh, go ahead. No, just be like, oh, uh, this one part where, um, like Xavier says, oh, looks like the Brotherhood are just uh, banding, and the like, was like, we're not disbanding, right? Like, no, oh, where, mm-hmm. where the hell you get that from? I just said they're, they're not together anymore. Where do you get this banding? <laughs> Scott was really like, I just got this job, okay? I don't want to lose it. <laughs> This is not Microsoft. <laughs> Scott, Scott is the newly appointed leader of the X Men. Uh, okay, so Professor X has another helicopter. It's it's uh, it's a little more stylized. We've seen a few helicopters destroyed already. Again, this man has a lot of money. Uh, this one's got some X's on it. It's like a little, cute little buggy. I, I think it's adorable. <laughs> and they uh, they track down uh, the stranger again. Uh, but the stranger has now revealed he is an insane alien, uh, a stranger from the stars, 
uh, quote, my people are greatly interested in mutations. I journey from planet to planet, taking specimens of mutants back to my world for study. I did not know whom to take from earth, but then the one who calls himself Magneto insisted I ally myself with him. Uh, he pulls Magneto and Toad into space, 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 space. And we uh, shall never return. Durr, durr, durr. Boom. And it's kind of delicious, right? Like, aren't you a little happy to see them get their just desserts? It's really funny. I mean, like, just, um, you see, like, Xavier's like, like, Magneto, uh, Magneto's being taken. No, 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 don't say anything. Don't say anything, guys. Just let him take it. it it's fine. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do anything. I do not feel bad for Magneto. I oh, feel a little bad for Toad. No. Yeah. You know, what, come on. Like, he's a, he's a grown man. He had, he could have said no. All right. Like, you know, I'm just saying, like, hey, it's like the R. Kelly thing. Uh, I see piss coming. I move. That girl saw piss coming. She stayed. So I'm just saying, personal responsibility. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm going to swallow my car. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Don't you always do that? Right? <laughs> no, I do not always swallow my comments. Uh, Heather, do you have anything you'd like to say there? <laughs> I am biting my tongue. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it between two consenting adults? It's just what works. Two legal consenting adults. <laughs> so Toad did agree to jump behind Magneto through the cone of energy, but I do not think he consented to being wrapped into membranes and yanked into space. Magneto didn't <laughs> consent to being wrapped in the You forgot the safe word. <laughs> I, I feel for Toad here. Toad can be a pretty nasty villain sometimes, but often he's kind of a sweetheart. I I, I, I care for him here. I like Mortimer. I feel like he's more of a sycophant than a villain, if we're being real. Mm -hmm. He does have his moments. There's some pretty evil shit in the future sometimes. Well, sure, but like for overall, especially what we've seen thus far, I feel like he's largely more of a sycophant than... If like, he were on his own, I don't feel like he'd be quite as evil. Yeah, absolutely agreed. But also the thing with Toad is his mutant powers, they gave him low self-esteem. Like he's, he sees other people and he's like, oh, their, their powers make them beautiful. But me, I look like a, I look like a Budweiser frog. Like what's, a, what's going on? Do I have to go talk to female alligators now? What, like what's going on? Like Toad it's is, bad. Toad is mentally ill. <laughs> oh, 100%. We, I just think he's depressed. He's, he's just really depressed. Really ill. No, yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> You see, when I hear mentally ill, I did like, oh, they need to be in a straight jacket. Like, like he, he just needs to, you know, like, cut the hair a little bit, change the image, like get a makeover. That, like what he wants to do. I, I'm not telling him what to do. Just, you know, make a change. Uh, Toad has a lot of iterations in the future. He's like the tall strapping like warrior guy like you see in the movies. Sometimes he's like green skinned and he's like the school janitor. Other times he's like, he, he forms his own brotherhood of evil mutants in the future. He's got like claws and he murders people. I mean, so we see a lot of versions of him. There's one point where he designs a giant frog suit of armor like Iron Man armor, but it's a frog and he like pilots it around and fights people. I love that so much. Yeah. He's, a great, he's a great villain. I really like him, actually. Uh, and I've been researching the Blob more recently. I've been like delving into his history, and I'm, I've really grown to love the Blob since we've been doing these, uh, these, uh, these podcasts. Uh, so the Brotherhood is gone. It's done, at least for now. Magneto and Toad are off in space being held captive. Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch have quit the team, and Mastermind has been turned into uh, solid matter. We will see all of them again, uh, but the X-Men's primary threats have disappeared. Professor X actually like pulls their names out of his little computer file. Like we're finished with them now. Uh, Yo, we, also, stop. we also see Blob and Eunice still list listed, but, uh, but the others are gone. Uh, what do you think about that? I'm, I mean, I'm wondering, oh, go for, I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead, Dirk. Um, I'm wondering what does it, uh, back at the helicopter, he says, guided by the mind of Charles Xavier. What does that mean? Did he take control of somebody's mind and he's con 
in his control of the helicopter, but you know, just I think he controls the helicopter with his mind. How does that? Mm. How does that? Because that's how that's how machines work. We uh, we're gonna see Professor X able to telepathically interface with technology when the Sentinels come into the picture. There's some weird mm -hmm. there's some weird stuff that goes on, uh, but it's possible, I suppose that he has keyed some technology to respond to his telepathic control. Okay. Uh, I okay, know. all right, I, I, I can get that. Oh, also, um, uh, when Charles is not a dick, when uh, they got out of the helicopter and they met up with the police, he said, hide me so they, so um, be, make a distraction because I can't let, I, we can't let them see who I am. My identity is still a secret. So, but if he was a dick, he would have taken control of their minds and like, I I mean, I think this, it just happened too quickly for him to do that. He reacted. <laughs> in this issue, he did not mind wipe any humans, which is a no. which is a wonderful thing. Which is a really really low bar that we have for Charles Xavier <laughs> for him to be a successful <laughs> person in an issue. He didn't erase anyone's mind once. Yay! He's a good guy. Jean Grey destroyed four billion people. We gave her a pass. Like, uh, that's yeah. the force, but yes, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, so, so back at the X Men's mansion, uh, Professor X has a another machine indicator going off, indicating that an, an enormous threat is coming their way. And we will learn next issue that it is the Juggernaut, who is one of my all time favorite X Men villains. Uh, while we're on that note, let me get your reactions to the next cover. So this is X-Men number 12, featuring the almost indescribable menace of the Juggernaut, and it's called The Origin of Professor X, so we get to delve into his history. Uh, some of your initial reactions on the cover? This needs to be a movie. This is, <laughs> this is how you do, you do this, you make it a horror movie. You don't show Juggernaut till the end. You just like, it's like, you just do it kind of like Jurassic Park, you hear the boom 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 and just just uh uh escalate the terror because they don't know what the juggernaut looks like so and when he comes and have him take pick them off one by one like he takes out angel bees gene iceman and then scott like and then get to try to get to xavier did you say horror movie or horror movie a uh, horror <laughs> Poor or poor or. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, just reincorporating. <laughs> or, 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 or. Okay. Uh, Colby and Heather, your initial thoughts to the cover or on the cover? Um, I think I'm just mostly excited because Juggernaut was always an X Men villain that I was aware of. Like, I'm pretty sure either my dad or my brother had an action figure of the Juggernaut at one point, and so like, it's, he's always been around and for me. And so I'm like, oh, hey, I know this one. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we, we've had a lot of one-off villains, but we get the Juggernaut and then the Sentinels right after that. So we've got some really fun Ooh. issues upcoming as far as classic. Right, all right. Uh, if we look at this, uh, this issue, this is the final kind of one-off issue as well. Not final, but starting in the next issue, we start to get continuations. The story does not end at the end of the issue. It picks up into the next one. So things, uh, storytelling style is changing here too. Well, it kind of feels like this last one didn't really end. Like he just like went off into space and they're like, oh, well, that was it. Like it was a little lackluster at the end, I feel like. It's kind of it's kind of a it's kind of a lazy end in some ways. There's not a lot of resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who was your star player in this issue? And did you have a favorite single moment? For me, my star player was the landlady that demanded the money. I adore her. Uh, and if I had to choose a, a single favorite moment, I think it's Mastermind getting what was coming to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about for you guys. Uh, uh, for me, I would say um, favorite moment would, favorite moment was when uh, Scarlet Witch is like, you know what? I'm done with this shit. I'm done. I'm, I'm d like, you know what? Um, like, no, Pietro, let's go. <laughs> we are. It almost looked like she was about to join the X Men for a like a, a hot second, like because like that whole thing between uh, Scarlet Witch, Jean Grey, and Cyclops really interested me. Like Jean, also Jean was kind of swooning over Cyclops this entire issue. And, oh, she has been. Yeah, and that, and that one part where she's like, 
uh, when he says my dear, it's like Richard Chamberlain. And I'm like, oh, no, no, it wasn't my, it, it, was, it was good girl. And he good called girl, me a sorry. good girl. We right. didn't talk about that. Ugh. Right. Oh, and girl. so I looked it up. I looked him up. I'm like, oh, she's, oh, she's okay with the sexual harassment. Okay. 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 So sexual harassment is only okay if you like the person. Okay. I mean, <laughs> if it's consensual. Like, if, you know, I can see that. He didn't know it was consensual. He just called her a good girl. He he gave her the same a tagline you would a dog. <laughs> Good girl. Pat her on the head. Right? Heather, did you have a reaction? To, did you have a reaction to the good girl thing? We did I didn't ask you about that. Um I laughed a little bit because a while back I saw like this um screen cap of someone saying that when they were getting a tattoo and like her tattoo artist what she thought was really hot. And she she was like, and I was breathing through the pain and she hit one spot where it hurt a lot and she was like, I took a really deep breath and like exhaled and the tattoo artist said, good girl, like as she kept going. And she was like, and that is one way to find out that I have a kink. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's kind of just what it made me think of whenever she was like, it's like when Richard Chamberlain says my darling and I'm like, that's one way to find out you have a kink. <laughs> uh, and, and Heather, while you're at it, did you have a favorite character, favorite moment? Um, I think my favorite moment was the landlady because that those four panels just cracked me up to no end. But I think my star players were um, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver because I have been waiting since they showed up to, for them to, you know, take their power back and be like, okay, we're done. We're walking away from Magneto and even though it felt, it wasn't quite a cop-out because they didn't know that he went to space, but it was almost a cop-out because it's like, oh, well, he can't do anything anymore. If they'd been there when he went to space and then they were like, okay, we're not aligned with him anymore, then it's like, mm, that's real lazy. But they didn't actually know that at the time, and so I can still give them props for it. Fair. And Cole? So I would I would also have to say that uh, when when the two of them left and went on their vacation to Europe, basically, like it was kind of a weird like departure, but I still kind of liked that. I thought it was kind of funny. So. Uh, and Heather, you're gonna miss the Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. You're not gonna see him for a long time. But I love them. I know. I know. Not together though, you'll see Quicksilver, and you'll see that he's just like his dad. He's just like that. But also. In this issue, you saw that Wanda is a little bit like, like Magneto too, because she was like, like when she's like, oh, I'm done. I'm like, oh yeah, that's definitely Magneto's baby. That's, <laughs> that's his baby. Like you can't, he can't deny her. <laughs> uh, it's going to be interesting because it's been revealed in the comics that they aren't, but it sounds like they may be changing. We'll see where it lands. Uh, I, I had so much fun uh, chatting with you guys and just nerding out. Thank you so much for being here uh, and and taking obscure comic books from the 60s and, uh, and highlighting them. Uh, if, uh, if, if people want to find you guys online, if you want to share, where can they find you? Um, I'm on 1407 Great Malkin Lane on YouTube, uh, Instagram. I started TikTok. I post on there daily. So if you want to get, uh, get a hold of me, I'm right there. Fantastic. Uh, Colbin and Heather, you're welcome to share if you'd like. Um, my Twitter and Instagram handle are the same. It's Heather underscore Beth underscore. And I am a lot more real on Twitter than on Instagram, but I post more on Instagram. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Okay. And for me, I'm an old man and I hardly use social media. So there's really no point in following me in any way. <laughs> Uh, bro. <laughs> and you can find uh, Gray Malkin Lane on uh, on Twitter and Instagram uh, as well, just by searching for Gray Malkin Lane. That's your easiest. And we're posting lots of old images from the comics, daily trivia contests. Uh, if you're enjoying the podcast, let us know how you're liking it, what you'd like to see more of. Uh, it sounds like we're scheduling a, a Professor X ethics debate coming up, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and we will be back next week uh, with uh, X-Men number 12 with the first appearance of the Juggernaut. So thank you all for, uh, for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank, Thank you guys. You. Have a beautiful night. Thanks. See ya. Bye-bye.